Welcome to ICA's video channel, taking the message of Jesus Christ to the world. For more information, go to our website at icahk.org. Good morning. Are you awake? Okay, good morning. Ah, much better. <laughs> you know I like, you know, big response. Come on. Okay, so are you excited about the December? The things that we have lined up for you? You know, invite your friends to the Christmas party because I know some of you are going to be graduating for completing the Class 101 and the Foundation of Faith. And you will want your friends to witness that big moment, you know, when you come up and get your certificate. So who's going to invite friends? Come on, raise your hands. Let's see it. All right. Okay. So, you know, last month, we went through this message series, Kingdom Movement, and we ended with Power to Weakness, right? And then Pastor Ed invited all of you to come out and we pray for you. How many of you came out for, to receive prayer? Not a lot. So this is all new to you, right? Okay. <laughs> and, you know, and you wonder, so what is it that you're empowered to witness? And now as we enter into, you know, the month of December, the series is called Heaven and Earth, what? Sings. Oh, heaven and nature sings. You know, Chris, December is a time of celebration. You know, just, the, uh, just on Thursday, I was passing through um, Central. I saw in Charter Garden, they already put up this big, blue, shiny tree. So, I mean, if you have time, go down there and take pictures. I, you know, it's really beautiful. You know, and I start hearing Christmas carols. How many of you are hearing Christmas carols when you go shopping? I've started hearing Christmas carols actually since last week, you know, in the malls. So people are in a mode of celebration. So what are they celebrating? What do you think they're celebrating? Birthday of Jesus. They're celebrating, yeah, they're celebrating the birth of a special person. You know, um, a teacher was asking her class, you know, five-year-olds, kindergarten, you know, today we're was telling them, today we're going to learn about the true meaning of Christmas. And the kids got all excited. They were like, so what do you think is, what do you think is the meaning, true meaning of Christmas? And the kids all raised their hands like, I know, I know, I know. And then they're like, oh, Christmas tree, turkeys, presents, you know, snow, Santa Claus. And so the teachers, okay, I better help them. It's not about the gift, kids, you know, boys and girls, it's about the giver of the gift. And one boy jumped up in excitement. Oh, teacher, teacher, I know, I know, I know. Okay, what do you know, Bobby? Tell me, what is the true meaning of Christmas? My mommy and daddy. <laughs> the giver of gifts, right? Our parents, our father and mother on earth, give us wonderful gifts. You know, I, and uh, how much more do you think our father in heaven is going to give us? He gave us such a wonderful gift that heaven and nature seem to celebrate. So today we're going to start our message with the title, Jesus came from heaven. So tell the person next to you, Jesus came from heaven. So what does that mean that Jesus came from heaven? Well, do you know that Christianity is the only, only religion on that God became man, fully man. All others look at, you know, Islam and Buddhism. It's always man trying to become God. But Christianity is the only one where God came down on earth to be fully man for a purpose. You know, so we're going to read John 
chapter 3, verse 13, our scripture verse for today in 16 and 17. For no one has ascended into heaven except he who descend from heaven, the Son of Man. And then verse 16, we all memorize this, right? So, for God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him, say believe. In him shall not perish. Perish. Yeah, but have what? Eternal life. Amen. In verse 17, it says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Amen. Wow. Jesus came from heaven for a purpose. And that purpose is so wonderful, so unbelievable, that guess what? Angels in heaven and all created things, nature, celebrate by singing what? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is here. God is coming. And, you know, and then and Jesus came from heaven. Where, is he? where did he go? From heaven to where? Earth. Here. You know, the fact that Jesus came from heaven tells us that he is a spiritual, heavenly being. You know, and in John chapter 1, it says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And what? The Word was God. Jesus was with God from the beginning. You know, some, some, some religions say that Jesus was a created, was the first angel created. But we know that's not true because John already established that he was with God in the beginning. And not only was he with God, he was indeed what? God. Okay. So Jesus was not created. He came from heaven to earth. He was outside of the created realm and he came into the created realm. And here, you know, in John 13, actually it's very interesting because, uh, you know, what happened was that Jesus was actually having a conversation with this religious ruler, Nicodemus. You know, Nicodemus, he was, one of, he was a high-ranking Pharisee, and he wanted to know more about this message of kingdom that Jesus was preaching. So he came to him, asking him, what is this all about? And Jesus was explaining to him, you know, that the kingdom, who, and by, in, in, in the explanation, in fact, he actually told Nicodemus, who he was. That's why in verse 13, he says, no one has ascended into heaven except he who descend from heaven, the Son of Man. So he was in fact telling Nicodemus that he was God. Tell the person next to you, Jesus is God. And he came to earth for me. He did. He came to earth. For, aren't you excited? Don't you want to sing? Just like the angels, right? In, you know, and um, here in 1 Timothy chapter 1, it says, The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. This is Paul talking. And we could say that, we could put our name in there. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom Mo Kwan, or your name, is the foremost. Because before we know God, before we accepted Jesus into our lives, we are sinners. And it's only through Christ that it was forgiven. You see, it needed God to come down. Nothing else. We said, oh, I could do, no, I could be a, I could do works. I give to the poor, I go visit, you know, the elderly, the lonely people. I give to, you know, UNICEF every year. I give, you know, Manna Foundation, I give. But guess what? When you don't have Christ, you know, we are separated from God. Our spirit is dead because of sin. And we needed God to come 
to be that bridge. We needed Jesus to come to be that bridge for us. To save us sinners. You know, chapter 3 of 1 Timothy, it says, Great indeed, we confess, is the mystery of godliness. He was manifest in the flesh, vindicated by the Spirit, seen by angels. Proclaim among the nations, believe on in the world, taken up in glory. You know, God became flesh on earth, proclaiming the kingdom of, among the nations, and when we believe in him, we will have life. Because, and how do we know that he was God? It says in First Peter, he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last time for the sake of you. So before even creation, he was there already. You know, he was not created, but he was the creator. He created us. Yet because... You know, we needed him, and that's why he came from heaven to earth to take on the power of sin on our behalf. Because sin, wages of sin is death, and we, no matter what we do, we cannot, you know, clean that, pay that debt. We needed him to come and pay that debt for us. And that's why, you know, he was sent from heaven. In verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believed in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So Jesus was sent. You know, God didn't take just anybody. He didn't take a good person on earth, a godly person. There were, I mean, John the Baptist, right? There's all these people. Godly people on earth already. Why didn't he take any one of them? Why did it have to be Jesus? Because in Romans chapter 8 verse 3, it says, By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Because it needed God, we, can't do, we cannot do it. We needed Jesus. That's why he sent Jesus came, to come, to be fully man, to die on the cross for us. Because we could not do it for ourselves. You know, you would have said, yeah, but I'm such a good person. I never steal, I never lie, you know. I've never done anything really, really bad. I don't need God. You know, some of my friends told me this. I have a good life. I live a good life. I have a good family. I have a good job. You know, I'm not like you. You were sick. You needed God. I don't need God. How many of you have heard that? You know, but did you know that, yes, you might have lived a good life. You might have never done anything wrong in your life. Look at the rich young ruler. He followed all the commandments. Yet, he was missing something. Even he who followed all the commandments could not go to heaven. Jesus said, you have to give everything up and follow me. What does that tell you? It tells you that, yes, we can follow, we can do everything right, yet if we don't have Jesus, it doesn't matter. We're still spiritually dead. We still, you know, will need to pay that punishment on the you know, for our sins, we need Jesus. We need to believe in Jesus. So that's why it says that whosoever believed in Jesus shall have everlasting life. You know, and he went on to say in verse 18 of John 3, whoever believes in Jesus is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. See, Jesus told Nicodemus where he came from. He came from heaven. He is the Son of Man. He became man, fully flesh. And in order to have eternal life, you have to believe in him. Because now he's telling him who he truly is. He is the Son of God. And you have to believe in him. 
so that you will not be condemned. Because if you don't believe in him, no matter what you do, it doesn't matter. You will still be spiritually dead. You will still be condemned. You need Jesus. I need Jesus to be that bridge between me and God to gap that, you know, to gap that separation so that we can go to him. And Jesus was given to us by God. You know, he was given to us in Romans 8, verse 32. He, did not spare, he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously, graciously give us all things? You know, last month we learned that God, not only are we children of God, we are co-heirs of, with Jesus and God gave us everything in heaven. And you know what? Not only did he give us everything, we had the kingdom. And the best of all is that we have a relationship with God, our Father. And you know, when you don't have that relationship, there is no hope. There's no life. So we need Jesus. That's why God, God gave us Jesus so that we could have that hope, have that life. Because we were all sinners, and God showed his love for us while we were still sinners. You know, Christ died for us in Romans 5. And in Romans 3, you say, oh, but I'm, my life is good. Yeah, but all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By ourselves, we cannot have, we cannot, you know, we cannot have that glory, return that glory, get that glory back. We need it to have the blood of Jesus to clear to wash away our sins because the wages of sin is death but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord you know just on Thursday I conducted a funeral for someone you know a good man he was adoring father loving husband he was young he was not even 70 years old and he was looking forward to retiring back home in Australia. In fact, the wife was saying, telling me that they were renovating the house, getting ready for them to move back to Australia. And then he just fell asleep and didn't wake up. It was very sudden. You know, life has a lot of uncertainties. Life is sometimes very short. And you might have lived a good life. You could have a good job, wonderful family, loving wife, adoring sons, children, yet in the space of an instant, it can be taken away. It was sad. I mean, it was sad because it was so sudden. The fact that the children, his two sons, they, weren't, they were still very sad by the suddenness of the father's death. And, but, the, you know, the message of, um, that I gave in the funeral was the joy and comfort of knowing Jesus. You know, even... The joy and comfort of knowing Jesus is knowing that, yes, life is short. Life is uncertain, even though it can be taken away suddenly. But we know where he's going. That's where that hope comes from. You could have a good life, but if you don't know Jesus, that moment of death, that's it. It's finished. You know, I've... I told you, I'm my, one of my ministry is hospital visit. And I can't tell you, times when I, have, when I go and visit, you know, in the hospital, and they were telling, and, the, and you could see the difference between knowing Jesus, having a relationship with Jesus, and not knowing, no relationship. Those people with no relationship with Jesus, they always tell me, I'm scared. I don't know where I'm going, I'm scared. But those who know Jesus, they're confident. They know where they're going. You know, they're not scared for themselves. They're scared for the, their family. Please make sure that they know Jesus so that we could, I could meet them, you know, one day in heaven. That's the assurance we have. So, yes, you may live a good life. You may be a good person. But if he says so, he said that those who don't know Jesus, they are condemned already. Because of this separation that we have from God, the separation from our Creator, that we will, we're spiritually dead. And then when we die, there's nothing. 
because we have no more hope. We have no more place to go. That's why we need Jesus. That's why Jesus came from heaven to earth so that we can have that hope. We can know that hope. We can know the joy and the comfort of where we are going next. You know, in, Ro in, a, in Romans 8, it says, For I'm sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Nothing. No death. No, you know, no human kingdom. Not even Satan, the devil, our enemy, can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Tell the person next to you, nothing can separate me from the love of God. Amen. Because the promise in 3.16 of John says, so whoever believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And it's that simple. All we have to do is just believe. You know, as in the flesh, we're always, oh, I need to do A, B, C, D, E, all list of everything. If I do all of that, then I'm good. I'm safe. But it's not. God just say, come. Receive and believe in the name of Jesus. That's all you need to do. So my question to you today is, do you believe, do you receive and believe in Jesus today? Do you like to have that joy and comfort of knowing Jesus? You know, some of you are here for the first time. So I want to just, you know, invite you, you know, that if this is today, you say, oh, I didn't know it was that simple. You mean all I have to do is just receive and believe? Yes, it's that simple. If you know, you say, yeah, I want to know. I want to know more about Jesus. I want to believe in him. I want to have that joy. You know, I want to have that joy of that eternal life. Okay, let's all stand. I want you to come. You know, the team, our altar team is here. We want to pray for you. You know, and then a second invitation is for those who said, oh, you know, I believe in Jesus, but I didn't know You didn't exactly give your life to Christ. I want you to come now and say, I want to give my life to you, God. I want to give my life to Jesus. You know, I want to know that joy. I want to be singing with the angels, with heaven and with nature to celebrate the birth of Jesus. And third invitation is, you know, if you're not if you are feeling, if you have a not feeling well today, especially, I don't know why, if you, I want to call out those, I have a, um, especially today, I think someone here has toothache. If that's you, come out. God wants to heal your toothache. Come on out, okay? If you're, you're having pain, He wants to heal you. Right. So I'm just going to pray for you. And then, I'm going to, the worship team is going to, you know, lead us into time of worship. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you. Thank you that you came from heaven. Thank you that you love us so much that you gave your only son. And Jesus, thank you for taking on the power of sin, taking on sin, becoming sin on my behalf. Lord, you see all these, my sisters who stand here, Lord Fathers, they, and in step of faith, Lord Father, to say that they want to receive you in their lives. So Lord, I pray, Lord Father, that you come, Lord Father, and speak to them, Lord Father, and shower them with your love, Lord Father, so that they know the joy of having that relationship with you. They have the comfort of that hope. 
know of life with you so lord we thank you in your most precious name i pray amen That is in your name the love and salvation that we could receive in your name thank you Lord Lord you know pray that you bless our week even as we even as we're entering you know this busy season there'll be parties not only our own but I'm sure in the employer's house Lord Father help us to you know to always remember that we're here this gift of your is because of this gift from you, Lord Father. Help us to have joy in everything that we do. And help us to, you know, to tell this good news to our, the people around us, Lord Father, so that they can receive that joy as well. So Lord, we just want to thank you for all that you are doing today, Lord Father, everything that you have been doing. In your most precious name I pray. Amen.